Welcome everyone to Jimmy John's Field for this Sunday afternoon ball game between the West Side William Mammoths and the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. Brian Fisher and Dan Dober with you here as we uh, inch closer to uh, first pitch here. And hopefully the weather holds out for us. It's going to be a little bit iffy going forward, but so far first pitch is going to happen on time. Dan, last time out, the Beavers won in a very dominating fashion yeah, over the East Side Diamond Hoppers. Yeah, it was a 15-board victory for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, and that was back on Thursday evening. The hitting was just all around for the Beavers. Yeah, every starting player in the lineup for the Beavers got an RBI besides Dan Cannon. It was it was just quite a game. Every single one of the players got on base through to a base hit. They just they were relentless, and they beat up on Tor DeShazer pretty badly in that game. Yes, they did. The West Side Boy Mammoths are also coming off a victory um, on Friday evening. They beat the Unicorn, shutting them out at 2 4 to nothing. RBI is coming from Kyle Hamner and... Riley Palmer, Donnie Murray started that game for the Unicorns, and he had a good game, but unfortunately uh, a couple of unearned runs really ended up killing him with Ethan Whisker scoring because of two wild pitches and an error. Yeah, you know what? Obviously, I mean, both of these teams going at it this afternoon is pretty good in their divisions right now. Westside Woolly Mammoths are actually leading their division right now. Yes, it's going to be a good matchup here. Like you, Dan, like you said, Dan, it's going to be a – Divisional matchup. Divisional matchup, yep. On the mound for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers is going to be Jake Welch, and on the mound for the Mammoths is going to be Jared Gaynor. Two good pitchers on the mound for both teams. Yes, indeed, Brian. And talking about Jared Gaynor, and just, I believe it is, I'm looking at it, uh, it's a 36 innings pitch, has, given, has two wins, three losses, has given up 38, 36 hits, um, 10 walks, 38 strikeouts, 13 runs, which were earned, and an ERA of 325 and a whip of 133. So, and for Jake Welch, it's his record is 3-1 yeah. and one with game 12 games pitched. Uh, his ERA is 348 with 27 strikeouts, 27 hits, and a whip of 126. Meanwhile, the starting lineups are going to start happening, so we'll send it down to the field for that. Six from Deming, New Mexico. 
Mexico, the third baseman, number 10, Dan Pennon with Jack Hops. Batting seven from Mount Washington, Kentucky, the catcher number 23, Hunter Wood with Johnny. Batting eight from Mount Pelier, Virginia, the shortstop, number one, DJ Martinez with Durbin. Batting nine from New High Park, New York, the second baseman, number 13, Thomas Rulis with Henry. The starting pitcher today for the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers from Spencerport, New York, number 15, Jake Welch with Wyatt Furtick. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the area by home plate. We're presenting the colors today is the UAW Region 1 Veterans Council Honor Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise for the singing of God Bless America, performed by Christine Elliott and Robin Fielder from American House. Salute 
as we honor America and our military with the singing of our national anthem performed today by St. John's Brass Ensemble. All right, welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dilber with you here. We're just a few moments away from first pitch. And, Dan, why don't you go through the starting lineups one more time for the West Side William Mammoth before we get to game time. I would love to, Brian. Leading off, the second baseman, Jeff Smith. Batting second, the shortstop, Kent Blackstone. Batting third, the designated hitter, Alex Abbott. Batting fourth, the first baseman, Ethan Whisker. Batting fifth, the third baseman, Riley Palmer. Batting sixth, the catcher, Nick Kraus. Batting seventh, the right fielder, Sean Wood. Batting eighth, the left fielder, Hagen Wilkie. And batting ninth, the center fielder, Joba Farrell. Defensively for the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers this afternoon, out in left, you have Mike Metashevsky. In center, you have Brandon Raw. In right, you have Denandre Clark. At third, you have Dan Kennan. At short, you have DJ Martinez. At second, you have Thomas Rudis. At first, you have Nick Wilson. Doing the catching behind the plate is Hunter Wood. And down the mound this afternoon for the Beavers is Jake Welch. Jake Welch, Dan, uh, who I was talking about before the lineup started, has the ERA of 348 he, in 12 games played with 31 innings pitched, 27 hits, 27 strikeouts, and 12 walks. He's been pretty good. His last start out, he only went four innings, gave up only two earned runs, struck out five. He's going to be looking to go into a little bit deeper into this game here for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. And the last time these two teams faced each other was back on the second, and he went six innings, had five strikeouts, had a walk and gave up three hits and one run, which was earned. So, yeah, that's, that's what's going on with the starting pitchers as Jeff Smith comes to the plate for the first at-bat of the ball game.
Here comes the first pitch from Jake Welch. Oh, it's going to be driven high in the sky in the left field. Metashevsky over on the warning track will make the catch. Wow. And Jeff Smith getting a lot under that one. Yeah, definitely a loud sound came off to his bat there. So the first pitch is going to be at 1.35 p.m., and that's going to be the first out of the ballgame as well as Jeff Smith nearly hit that one out down the left field line as Metashevsky had to cruise under the warning track to get that one. We have a light breeze this afternoon, Brian. Yeah, the clouds are looking a little uh, little bothersome as it's going to be a ball outside 1-0 and on Kent Blackstone. So far this season, Blackstone's hitting 263, has 20 hits, two home runs, and 24 RBIs. He leads the league in RBIs as well as the 1-0 pitch comes in. It's going to be a ball 2-0. Uh, Kent Blackstone, Dan, like I just mentioned, is leading the league in RBIs. He's going to ground that one down the first base line, but it's going to bounce foul after hitting the the infield grass. Two and one on him now. Dan, who did you go with for your player of the game? I went with Brandon Raw this afternoon. It's a good pick. Brandon Raw, since joining the Beavers in his Seven games played with him so far. Has eight hits, two home runs, and nine RBIs with a 267 batting average. Totally has five home runs and 21 RBIs in the season. Swing and a miss there from Blackstone. Count falls even at two and two. So he's been putting on a strong showing all season long, and he's a pretty solid pick for player of the game. Who are you going with, Brian? I'm going with DJ Martinez. He's had, in 26 games played with the Beavers, he's got 18 hits, 10 RBIs, and a 233 batting average. He went two for five in his last game with two base hits. One of them was a double with a one RBI in that ball game. So he had a good a good game last time out. So I'm looking to see if he can carry that over as he grounds that one and off. And what about Steve? Three and two now on Ken Blackstone. Uh, Steve went with Mike Metashevsky, the number four hitter, in seven games played at the Beavers. He's still fairly new. He's got five hits and one RBI, batting 222. Three two pitch swung on Ooh. and miss. And after going to a full two count against. Kent Blackstone, Jake Welch ends up dusting him off. King him there with an all-speed pitch. So Alex Abbott will come to the plate now. Two down here in the top of the first inning and no men on. Didn't have too good of a game back on Friday when they faced off the Unicorn stand. He went 0 for 5 in that ball game, striking off three times. Going to ground that one through for a base hit on the right side. So he gets off on the right foot here, singling into right field. So Ethan Wister is going to come up to bat with a man on and two outs. Ethan Wister so far this season hitting 208, has five hits, a homer, and four RBIs. He was two for four back on Friday with two base hits and an intentional walk as that's going to be a ball one and oh, 91 mile an hour fastball out of the glove of, or out of the hand of Jake Welch. Or oh and one. That one's going to be in there for a strike as well. Oh and two now. Welch. Getting there on the inside corner. Comes the pitch from Welch. That one's going to be grounded over to the shortstop. Martinez is going to get past him into the outfield. And Martinez Looks tumbled like a little bit before making actually a diving stop. Rolled a bit awkwardly on his yeah. shoulder there, but he seems okay. So that's two hits now for the Woolly Mammoths this inning. So they, the first two men up ended up getting out, but now they have something going here. Two outs in the top of the first. And here comes Roddy Palmer to the plate. He's so far the season hitting 233, has 21 hits, three home runs, and 12 RBIs. He's got a chance to give his team the lead here early in this ballgame. Swing and a miss at the first pitch she sees. 91 mile an hour fastball blown by him. 0-1. Big cut there from Palmer. 
Yeah, Dan, back on Friday's game, Palmer had a great game. He went three for five with an RBI and two stolen bases. See if he can continue it this afternoon. Having that day off might have been a little bit of a momentum killer. Comes the 0-1 pitch, and that's going to be swung on missed again. That time, changing speeds there, going to 82 mile an hour off-speed pitch. Yeah, we've seen a great battle last night between the Hoppers and the Unicorns. Well, we mammoths haven't played since Friday. Minute first and second here. Here's the 0-2 pitch. It's going to be outside one and two now on Palmer. It was an exciting day of baseball yesterday, Dan. Yeah, it was. We two walk-offs. Yeah, two walk-offs. We had the completion of a June 22nd game that was delayed because of rain. The Hoppers walked off with a grand slam from Ken, Cam Stewart, and then the Unicorns in the 7.05 start walked off in the bottom of the ninth. Meanwhile, Riley Palmer's going to take for a called strike three. And Riley Palmer's going to disagree with that call. That's his second strikeout this inning. But that's going to end the top of the first, and we go to the bottom of the first inning. We're due up for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. will be Denon J. Clark, Brennan Raw, and Nick Wilson. So we'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dober with here as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Dan, why don't you go through the starting lineup for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers as they come up to bat? I would love to. Leading off, the right fielder, Denandre Clark. Batting second, the center fielder, Brandon Raw. Batting third, the first baseman, Nick Wilson. Batting fourth, the left fielder, Mike Metashevsky. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, Nicholas Buckner. Batting six, the third baseman, Dan Kennan. Batting seventh, the catcher, Hunter Wood. Batting eighth, the shortstop, DJ Martinez. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Thomas Rudis. Defensively for the Warrior Mammoths this afternoon. Out in left, you have Hagen Wilkie. In center, you have Joba Farrell. In right, you have Sean Wood. At third, you have Roddy Palmer. At short, you have Kent Blackstone. At second, you have Jeff Smith. At first, you have Ethan Whisker. Doing the catching behind the plate is Nick Krause. And down the mound this afternoon for the Wally Mammoths is Jared Gaynor. Jared Gaynor has been excellent so far this season. He was roughed up in his last start, however, going four and one-thirds with five and runs. So he's going to be looking to bounce back here. His ERA is still only at 325, however, as that's going to be a ball high 1-0 and oh on to Andre Clark. So far this season, Denandre Clark, he led part of the season with the leading batting average, but now has really dropped. He is hitting 355, has 38 hits and 13 RBIs. He was passed up by Cam Stewart. Well, first and he was Belkin. passed up by Brett Bel Balkin. Belkin, now yep. they're both passed up by Cam Stewart. 2-0 pitch is going to be on the inside corner for a strike, 2-1. and one. Yeah, Dan. Denandre Clark, uh, you say he's really dropped, but his average really, is still yeah. at 355. Mm -hmm. May not be leading the league anymore, but he's still been hitting phenomenally for the Beavers all season long. As it's going to be a ball three and one now. Three one pitch is going to be inside to so Denandre Clark. Draws a walk to start the game for the Beavers. Clark is very dangerous on the base pad, so Derek Gaynor is going to keep a close eye on him. You don't want to lead off. You don't want to walk the leadoff batter to start the ball yeah. game. That doesn't bode well. It's very dangerous. So, with, especially with Brandon Raw coming up, the first three hitters 
even the heck, even the first four hitters for the Beavers are all really dangerous. You got Denandre Clark, who is great contact hitter, is hitting 355. Brennan Raw, who is got 22 RBIs in the season. That's good for second in the league in RBIs. That's going to be a strike 0 and 1 on Brennan Raw. And then Nick Wilson, who's a home run hitting machine, batting third. So give, giving a leadoff walk is very dangerous to this Beavers lineup. Oh, one pitch. He's going to swing and miss on that one, or foul tip that one, I mean. It's going to go to 0 and 2. I picked Brandon Raw as my player of the game this afternoon. The season he's hitting 269, has 29 hits, 5 home runs, and 22 RBIs. Yeah, and last time out for the Beavers, he went 2 for 5, 2 for 6, I apologize, with 2 RBIs. So that's going to be a ball high. They're going to throw down to first base trying to get Clark, but Clark runs back in safely. So one and two now on Raw. Clark has to be careful down there. Cross behind the plate is a good arm. As the wind is starting to pick up here. One, two pitch, he swings and misses at that one. He chased the 80 mile an hour off speed pitch outside the zone. He goes down swinging. It's gonna be the first out of the ball game for the Beavers. And here comes the dangerous Nick Wilson to the plate. He is also the 2017 USPBO Home Run Derby champion. He won the Home Run Derby on a last second uh, pitch that knocked out John Mankin of the Hoppers. Nick Wilson went three for four with two, three hits and two RBIs and was hit by a pitch twice. And that's going to be a hit and chopper situation. down to sh second base and Smith will play, make the throw down to first and that's going to be two outs. But like you said, Dan, it was a hit and run and he got the job done and Andre Clark advanced to second now. So now Mike Matyshevsky will stand in. Mike Matyshevsky before the game was saying that he was feeling pretty good today. Yeah, he So is. expect big things out of Matyshevsky today. So far this season, hitting 185, has five hits and an RBI. Matyshevsky was also Steve's pick for player of the game as the first pitch is going to be grounded over to the, cat, the pitcher's mound, and he will get there, Ooh. or he won't. He'll be called out Very on the run, and that there. was a close play. I thought he was safe. Yeah. But the ump is going to say he's out, so Matyshevsky grounds out. That's going to end the first inning. We go to the top of the second now. We're due up for the West Side Way Mammoths is Nick Kraus, Sean Wood, and Hagen Wilkie. It's still a 0-0 tie ball game, so we'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Got a mask on here. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. at this time, please direct your attention to the video board. Someone has a very important question to ask. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness! Oh my
Welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dublin with here as we go to the top half of the second inning where two for the West Side Willow Mammoths will be the catcher, Nick Kraus. He was not in the ball game on Friday evening when the Willow Mammoths played, so we'll get a good eye on him this afternoon. So far on the season, Dan, he's batting just 227. He's got three RBIs, however, on five hits. The first pitch to him is going to be a strike 0-1, a 90-mile-an-hour fastball that was over the middle third of the plate. Oh, one pitch is going to hit right back to the mound. The second baseman, Rulis, is going to get it, and he'll throw it on to first base where Wilson will make the catch, and Nick Cross will ground out on the second pitch he sees. So now Sean Wood will come up to bat here. Wood playing right field today for the West Side Roy Mammoths. Another player who was not in the game back on Friday evening. Riley Palmer playing right field in that one. Still looking for his first hit here in in USPBL career. First pitch to him was a ball. As Welch delivers the second one, which is also a ball, 2-0 oh now. Two zero pitch is in there for a ball again. So quickly three and zero now on Wood. Here comes the three zero. That's going to miss way high and outside, and it's going to be a four pitch walk to Sean Wood. So Hagen Wilkie will step in now with a runner at first base and one out here in the top of the second inning. Coming into the, this afternoon's ball game, Jake Welch has only given up 12 walks this season. Now he's number 13. Comes the first pitch to Wilkie. That's going to be a strike. 80 mile an hour fastball. 0 oh 1 now. Oh, one pitch is going to be inside. One and one on Hagen Wilkie. So that ball caused Wilkie to spin a little bit out of the way of that one. Wilkie was 0 for 4 back on Friday. He did reach, however, on a fielder's choice in the eighth inning. Still looks to get that back going here. He's been having some troubles as he swings and misses at that one. One and two now. Batting just 130 on the season, but he does have a home run with five RBIs. Mammoth's going with their blue uniforms this afternoon. Throw it on first base. Oh, they almost Ooh, got yeah. Sean Wood, who was late getting back in. Ooh. Looked like he was watching in slow mo down there. Just got a hand in there. Quick pickoff throw from Jake Welch. Very nearly got him. Here comes the one-two pitch. That's going to be a ball that misses just barely inside. Count will fall even at two apiece now. Two-two pitch. It's going to miss inside again. It's going to go full now on Hagen Wilkie. As Sean Wood, I'm sorry, Jake Welch may very... May very well walk two batters in a row here to start the second inning. Comes the 3-2 pitch. It's going to be grounded off the ankle of Hagen Wilkie as he hobbles that one off. Yeah, that would just sting just a little bit. So 3-2 and two now. And like you said, Brian, well, it's got to be careful here. doesn't want us walk two batters in a row. So Welch sets on the mound. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. It's going to ground that one down the third base line. Kennan's got it. He's going to throw it on a first. It's going to be his only play, and 
He will get the out down there at first base, but the leadoff runner will advance to second base. So there's a runner at second base with two outs for Jobel Farrell here. Jobel Farrell on Friday evening was 0 for 4, striking out three times. Farrell this season's hitting 159, has 13 hits, a homer, and four RBIs. First pitch to him is going to be a ball outside 0 and 1 as it or 1-0, oh, I'm sorry, as the 89-mile-an-hour fastball misses. Little pitch, he's going to sky that one to right field. Clark moving over, will make the catch. And that's going to be it here in the top of the second inning. The Mammoths threaten but don't score, so we go to the bottom of the second where Joe for the Beavers will be the DH, Nick Buckner, the third baseman, Dan Kennan, and the catcher, Hunter Wood. Be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dober with you here as we bring you the bottom of the second inning in this Sunday afternoon matchup between the Mammoths and the Beavers. It's still tied 0-0 as Nick Buckner comes to the plate. So far this season, Nick Buckner is hitting 276. He has 27 hits, a homer, and seven RBIs, and he was picked this afternoon for player of the game, the Hanson's player of the game. Yeah, then he was two for five back on Thursday with two base hits, an RBI, and a walk, and as well as a fielder's choice. So he was very active, as most of his teammates were. 0-2 oh, now on Buckner. So he fouls that one off. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss there from Buckner as he... Dusted off in an 88 mile an hour fastball low in the zone. It's going to be the second strikeout for Jared Gaynor now. He dusts Clark with fashion. Very quick there. So Dan Kennan's going to come up to the plate now with one down here in the bottom of the second inning. Dan Kennan was the only team on the starting lineup for the Beavers that did not get a RBI in that ball game Thursday in that 15-4 domination of the Hoppers. But he did have two hits, however, so he did his part as well, came, coming around to score twice and walking with, for a total of 
two for five in that ball game. And let me tell you, Brian, that was a huge win for the Beavers against those hoppers. The Beavers definitely needed it to stay within the Woolly Mammoths in the division. Meanwhile, he pops that one up in a foul territory in the right side. Whisker over will make the catch, and that's going to be two quick outs here in the bottom half of the second inning. So just like that, there's two down, and Hunter Wood is up to bat. Hunter Wood in Thursday evening's ball game, he had two RBIs. He has, on uh, total, he was two for two for five in that ball game, just like many of his teammates were. He had a walk as well. The first pitch to Wood was a ball, one and oh. Here comes the delivery from Gaynor. He's going to ground that one foul on the third baseline, one and one now. We have a pretty good crowd on hand this afternoon, Brian. Yeah, the grandstand is probably about half full, but that right field patio is absolutely yes. jam-packed with people down there. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of room to walk. The 1-1 one -one pitch is swung on and missed. 1-2 and two now. Hunter Wood almost got hit in the back of the head with the throw back to the mound. Good thing Krause stopped last second there. It's always great to spend a relaxing Sunday afternoon at a ballpark. The one-two pitches in. He's going to swing and miss at that one. He's going to go down on strikes. Very quick inning there for Jared Gaynor. One, two, three, down in order. And we're going to go to the top of the third. We're due up for the West Side William Mammoths. It's going to be Jeff Smith, Kent Blackstone, and Alex Abbott. Still a 0-0 zero -zero tie. We'll be back short with more. Please stay tuned. I thank you. I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everyone, to the uh, top of the third inning. We're due up for the West Side Boy Mammoths is Jeff Smith. It's still a 0-0 tie. So far, Jeff Smith 0 for 1. He flew up to the left fielder, Mike Matuszewski, his last time up. Yeah, that was almost a line drive home run down the left yeah. side there, Dan. Matuszewski made the catch on the warning track as it died off. Yes, there was a loud sound coming off of the bat of his. It's the first pitch to Smith. It's going to be a ball inside, 1-0. Comes the delivery from Welch. Uh, another ball inside. 2-0 and now. Two fastballs in a row, both inside. Comes the pitch. 2-0 pitch going to be skied into the stands behind home plate. So, Cat will go to 2-1 and one now. Yet another fastball. Welch seems to be 
relying on that pretty heavily here in the early going. Here comes the 2-1 pitch. It's going to be another ball inside and yet another fastball, 3-1. Three one pitch gonna be skied in the air towards right field. Actually, it's not even gonna get out that far as just on the edge of the outfield grass is gonna be Rulis who makes the catch. So it's gonna be one down here for Jake Welch. Ken Blackstone's gonna come up to bat for his second plate appearance of the ball game. He struck out his first time up. That was after getting into a three two count. He chased a pitch outside the zone. Swings and misses at the first pitch he sees. 0-1 now. Coming to this afternoon's ball game, Ken Blackson was hitting 263, had 20 hits, two home runs, and 24 RBIs. And like you said, he has a lead leading RBI. Swings and misses at another one. 0-2 now. Swings and misses at A oh, two pitch, 82 mile an hour, wow. three change ups in a row from Jake Welch, dusts off Kent Blackstone. After relying heavily on the fastball for Jeff Smith, he changes it up, goes to, well, the change up, and fools Kent Blackstone for a second strikeout of the row. Now here's Alex Abbott to the plate. He hit for a single his first time up. Swings and misses at the first pitch he sees, 0-1. Oh, 0-1 pitch is going to be outside, 1-1 one one now on Alex Abbott. Comes the pitch from Welch. He's going to swing and miss at a fastball high out of the zone, one and two. Comes the one-two pitch. Oh, just barely misses the zone on that one. Two and two. Two two pitch is gonna be way inside. Three and two. So with a full count and two outs here in the top of the third, here comes the pitch. It's gonna foul that one in the netting behind home plate. Got quite a few fans that jumped after that one. So with a full count, here comes the pitch. It's going to miss him with the fastball inside. So with two outs, Alex Abbott is going to walk. And that's his second walk batter this game. So with two outs and a man on, Ethan Wister's going to come up to bat, Dan. Yeah, he hit for a single his last time up as well. So he's one for one in today's game, and he's carrying that over from the last game where he went two for four with an intentional walk and two base hits. So he rolls the momentum over for his team. Now one mile an hour fastball, oh, low. In the inside corner, 1-0. and Throw down to first base. Ooh, that almost got Alex Abbott. Actually got away from Nick Wilson, but I don't think Abbott realized it. So he will stay put. 
That throw over actually hit Alex Abbott. That's why he was slow getting up. One ball, no strikes on Ethan Whisker. So man at first base and two outs in the top of the third. It's a 0-0 ball game. Comes the 1-0 pitch. 89 mile an hour fastball. Fouled off down the left side. 1-1 one one now. Saw Whisker in the batting cages before the game started, Dan. He was making a lot of good contact, scoring up a lot of the balls. Yeah, he's, he did really good on Friday evening. The 1-1 one, one pitch is going to be a strike, 1-2. and two. It's great to see the players get the reps that they do. One two pitch, swung on and missed, fooled at the curveball low, and he's going to be dusted off. Two strikeouts descending for Jake Welch. They get a man on first, but that's all they get going as they strand him there. We go to the bottom of the third inning where due up for the Beavers is going to be D.J. Martinez, Thomas Rulis, and Denandre Clark, the eight, nine, and one hitters in their lineup. So we'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone, to the bottom half of the third inning in this Sunday afternoon matchup between the Beavers and the West Side Woolly Mammoths. It's a nothing-nothing tie where D.J. Martinez is due up to start off the bottom half of the inning. You went with him this afternoon as your player at the game, Brian. Yes, let's see what he's made of here. He had a good game the other day for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. I'm sorry, the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. He had an RBI and was... Two for five in that ball game with a walk as well. He also had a double. That double was back in the fourth inning in that game. So the first pitch to Martinez is going to be a ball low 1-0. and oh. So far this or season. Or a strike, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Dan. So far this season, Martinez is hitting 200, has 18 hits and 10 RBIs. He's going to whiff at a 87-mile-an-hour fastball high in the zone, 0-2 oh on him. Gainer sets. Here comes the pitch. It's going to be a pitch way outside. One and two now. Oh, 
He's going to flare that one over the head of Smith, and that's going to be a base hit in the right field. So DJ Martinez leads off the inning with a base hit. That's the first hit for the Beavers in today's ballgame. Yeah, Gaynor was really cruising in the first two innings of this ballgame. Right now, Gaynor has three strikeouts and has only given up one walk. So the man on first base and no odds here in the bottom of the third inning. The Beavers look to get something going as they look to strike first in this ball game. It's going to be a pitch inside to Gaynor. I'm sorry, to Rulis, 1-0. So far this season, Rulis is hitting 306, has 26 hits, a home run, and 13 RBIs. Comes the delivery. It's going to be a ball 2-0 and as that one misses inside. Going to keep an eye on D.J. Martinez down there at first base. Yeah, he has a couple of stolen bases already this season. 2-0 pitch is going to be a strike 2-1 and one now. As that one hits the bottom of the strike zone as it starts to fall out. Comes the 2-1 pitch. He's going to ground that one towards the shortstop Blackstone. He's going to toss down a second base, throw down a first, and they're going to turn the double play. So great reaction time there by Kent Blackstone, tossing it down to Smith, who in turn threw it to Whisker at first to get both Martinez and Rulis out. That'll help to kill any of the momentum they had coming in. Now at the bat is Denandre Clark. He walked his first time up. So now with bases clear and two outs, it's going to be up to Denandre Clark to keep things going this inning. Both teams are scoreless as of yet in this ball game. It's going to show bunt there, but he's going to pull it back. But it's going to be in the strike zone nonetheless. 0-1 oh now. Coming into this afternoon's ball game, Clark's hitting 355, has 38 hits and 13 RBIs. Swings and misses at that one. 0-2. Oh that was a big cut from him there. Yeah, he was chasing after that 88-mile-an-hour fastball. Here comes the 0-2 pitch from Gaynor. Swings and misses at that one. And he dusts off to Andre Clark. And quickly. So after three full innings of play, it's still a tie 0-0. When we come back to the top of the fourth, do it for the West Side Williams. Mammoths will be Riley Palmer, Nick Krause, and Sean Wood. We'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Hey, it's Matt Derry out here in right field in front of the merchandising tent and the trailer. We are having a blast. Get your US PBL gear right here. We've got 24 different kind of hats. We've got jerseys, pennants, foam figures. This West Side Woolly Mammoth jersey is straight fire. You've got to get these jerseys, these hats, everything out here in right field. And of course, the merchandising area behind home plate in the grandstand. Check it out.
Welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dober with you here as we bring you the top of the fourth inning between the Beavers and the Mammoths. It's still a nothing-nothing tie. So Riley Palmer's going to come up to the plate. He's 0 for 1 this afternoon to start. He struck out his first time up. Yeah, that ended the first inning. It was a pitch on the outside of the plate, and he did not agree with the call from the ump as he swings and misses at that one, 0 and 1. Coming into the ball game this afternoon, Palmer's hitting 233, 21 hits, 3 home runs, and 12 RBIs. A 92 mile an hour fastball misses outside, 1 and 1. We've seen Jake Welch miss a lot with that fastball on the left side of the plate. It, definitely something he has to work on. Comes the 1 1. Well, that one's going to be driven deep to right field, and it's going to. No, a fantastic diving play by Denandre <laughs> Clark. Makes the catch soaring through the air. <laughs> Made it look easy, Brian. <laughs> wow. And what a play by him to rob Riley Palmer of a base hit and possibly more. Beautiful play there by Clark. Denandre Clark with a diving catch out there in right field. First pitch to Nick Cross going to be a fastball. Be called his first strike in the high end of the strike zone, 0-1. Cross his first time up, grounded out to the second baseman, Thomas Ruiz. That's going to be a fastball. Misses inside to Kraus, 1-1. One one. That one was close. Jake Welch, Dan, like I just mentioned, missing a lot of his fastball's arm side. 1-1 one, one pitch is going to be outside. 2-1 and one now. His other pitches seem to be hitting the strike zone okay, but he's been missing a lot with that fastball. So I'm wondering if possibly he's releasing the ball a little bit too early. The 2-1 pitch is going to be fouled off. Just barely getting a piece of that one, Kraus. 2-2 two and two now. So there's one down here in the top of the fourth inning after a spectacular diving catch from Denandre Clark, Clark in right field. The 2-2 two -two pitch way outside. 3-2 and two slider from Jake Welch. Wasn't even close to the strike zone. Yeah, he, Clark, leaped across the outfield there. It's going to be a fastball inside missing for a walk for Nick Krause. And that's Welch's third walk of the ball game. So now Sean Wood will step in. He walked his first time up. He's got a runner at first base down there now with one out. Swings and misses at that one. 0-1 on Sean Wood as he looks like he missed on the change up there. It's going to be a ball low and inside. 1-1. One one. Nick Krause with a decent lead down there at first base as Jake Welch sets on the mound. Here comes the pitch. He's going to barely get a piece of that one, so the count will go one and two now. Yeah, Krause wants to definitely be careful because we see the move that Welch has on his throw over. He nearly got. Yeah, very quick. Nearly got Alex Abbott last inning with that. 1-2 pitch, he's going to foul that one off to stay alive. Chasing what looked like a changeup outside the zone. Comes the 1-2 pitch. 
is going to hit that one back up the middle and a diving catch by Rulis. And they're going to double up. Knight cross down there at first base. So two beautiful diving stops in this inning. Clark out in the right field and then Rulis there makes a diving catch to Rob Sean Wood of a base hit. We'll make the third on to first base to double up Nick Krause. And we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. We're due up for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. will be Brandon Raw, Nick Wilson, and Mike Metashevsky. That's the two, three, four hitters of the Beavers lineup. So we'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone, to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's a 0 0 ball game where Brennan Ross set to lead it off for the Beavers. Seen a couple of great defensive plays by the Beavers the last inning. Yeah, in the last half inning, we saw Denandre Clark make a spectacular diving catch, making the catch in midair out there in right field. Then Rulis made a diving stop, well, actually, a diving catch out there at second. Meanwhile, Ross is going to foul off the pitch, first pitch he sees 0 1. He was able to double up on that play as well. Yeah, they managed to double up Nick Krause after he got to his feet, made a quick throw down to first base to Nick Wilson, and that ended the inning. And here we are now with Brenner Raw up the bat. He's 0 for 1 so far this afternoon. He struck out his first time up. So that one is going to miss outside. 1 and 1 now on Brenner Raw. Gainer's fastball seems to top out at 88 miles an hour. He's going to ground that one over the third baseman. Palmer has it. He's going to make the toss down to first, and that's going to be 1 out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. So now Nick Wilson will step in. Nick Wilson's a good guy to go to if you're looking to start something with the offense. Last time up, ground out to the second baseman, Jeff Smith. But yeah, like you said, Brian, he's definitely a power hitter in this Beavers lineup. He also was the 2017 USPBL Home Run Derby champion. As the first pitch to Wilson is swung on and missed, 0-1. Got to be careful when pitching to Nick Wilson because he can hammer them deep out in the center field. He's got a lot of power in that bat. That's going to be a ball outside, one and one. We've mentioned a few times, Dan, about the time he broke his <laughs> yeah. bat and still hit the ball off the wall out there in left field for an RBI. Comes the one one. He's going to sky that one out of play. One and two now. Here comes the delivery of the pitch from Gaynor. It's going to be fouled off. One and two on Wilson. The 
The one-two pitch. It's going to be a changeup down low in the zone. Going to miss, though, two and two. Nick Wilson is going to go down on strikes as he swings and misses at that one. That's a big strike out there from Gaynor. Getting out Nick Wilson is always a, an accomplishment. That's Gaynor's fifth strikeout in this ball game. So now Mike Matyszewski will stand in and five strikeouts, Dan, in just three and two-thirds innings. is that's Well, that's just a lot of strikeouts. Yeah, it is. Uh, his last time out, <laughs> he went four and one-thirds. He did have six strikeouts. So he's already approaching that. 87 mile an hour fastball is going to be in there for a strike 0 1 right over the heart of the plate. Mike Matuszewski, his first time out, grounded out back to the mound, but made it very close there at first. Got fooled on the curveball there as he swings and misses it that one 0 2. Started out over the heart of the plate and then dropped down out of the strike zone. Fantastic pitch there. Be 0 2 now, or 1 2 now as that pitch missed. The one-two pitch comes in. He's gonna swing and miss. Wow, made him look silly there. At a pitch on the inside, on the inside of the plate, and that's gonna do it here for the fourth inning. After four innings of play, it's still tied 0-0. Jared Gaynor has a one-two-three inning for the second time today. As we go to the top of the fifth, we're due up for the West Side William Mammoth. It's gonna be Hagen Wilkie, Joe Farrell, and Jeff Smith. We'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Mask right here you. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. at this time, please direct your attention to the video board. Someone has a very important question to ask. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the top half of the fifth inning. Brian Fisher and Dan Dobler with you here as we bring you the Sunday afternoon matchup between the Beavers and the Mammoths. Divisional matchup as well. It's been a very good pitching matchup so far. Yeah, uh, Jared Ginner on the mound for the West Side of William Mammoths only given up one hit so far, and Jake Welch only given up two. 0-0 zero, zero tie as that's going to be 89-mile-an-hour fastball. Misses inside, 1-0 and oh on Hagen Wilkie. Hagen Wilkie's 0-for-1 so far this afternoon. Ground out to the third baseman, Dan Kennan, his first time up. See, 1-0 pitch is going to miss in the dirt outside, 2-0. and Comes the delivery of the pitch from Jake Welch. It's going to be fouled off by Hagen Wilkie, 2-1 now. A lot of young kids here at the ballpark this afternoon, Brian. It's always great to see. Yeah, that is a uh, that is something you see quite often here as baseball is very popular with 
People of many ages as he swings and misses at that one. 90 mile an hour fastball high in the zone. Taking a look he just couldn't catch up to. Two and two. So with two balls and two strikes, Jake Welch sets on the mound. Here comes the pitch. 89 mile an hour fastball inside. He's going to miss, so the count's going to run full now. Three and two. So with three balls and two strikes. Here comes the delivery of the pitch, and he's going to foul tip that one, staying alive here. And the count will remain three and two. Jake Welch wants to be careful. He doesn't want to walk his fourth batter in this ball game. We haven't seen a whole lot of offense, but part of the reason is because of the def spectacular defensive plays we've seen as well, robbing hits multiple yeah. times. 3-2 pitch, swung on and missed. An 89-mile-an-hour fastball right over the heart of the plate. Hey, Wookie just couldn't catch up with that one, so he goes down on strikes. That's Welch's fifth strikeout of this ball game. So Jobo Farrell will stand in now. One out and no man on in the top of the fifth. He's 0 for 1 as well this afternoon. He flew out to the right fielder, Denandre Clark. His first time up. So here comes the delivery from Welch. It's going to be a ball inside, 1 and 0. Still missing a lot arm side with that fastball, it seems. Not getting the calls in the inside corner. He's going to ground that one. Foul, one and one now. So Farrell will return to the plate. One out here in the top of the fifth inning. Two hits for the Mammoths, one hit for the Beavers. Not much to speak of offensively, but there's been some spectacular defensive plays to make up for that. He's going to check his swing on that one. They're going to appeal down to first base. They're going to say he didn't go. So it's going to be a ball, two and one. Last inning, we had a diving play from Don J. Clark in right field, then a diving play by Rulis at second base to make a catch, then double up Kraus at first. So two and two now as Farrell fouls off that one. Comes the delivery of the 2-2. Swung on a miss. Joba Farrell goes down. Make that six strikeouts now for Welch. After throwing him almost exclusively fastballs, he fools him there on the changeup down low. As Joba Farrell goes down, striking out. And that's going to be another strikeout for Jake Welch. Feels like that's Jake Welch's go-to pitch to change up. Yeah, Dan, he throws a lot of fastballs and then... Gets them accustomed to that pitch and throws them an off-speed pitch to throw them off. Here comes the delivery of the pitch to Jeff Smith. So far this afternoon, he's 0 for 2. Flew out to the left fielder, Mike Matuszewski, his first time up, and then flew out to the second baseman, Thomas Ruiz, the second time. That was a pop-up that didn't even make it on, onto the outfield. That's going to be a ground ball over the third baseman, Kennan. Kennan's going to toss down to first base and going to get him. It's going to be a 1-2-3 inning for Jake Welch here in the fifth inning. We've played half a game of baseball here at Jimmy John's Field, and when we come back to the bottom of the fifth inning, the Beavers are going to have due up Nick Buckner, Dan Kennan, and Hunter Woods. We'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone, to the bottom half, the fifth inning. Still 0-0 tie here between the Beavers and the Mammoths as Nick Buckner is set to lead it off. He led off the second inning, Dan, by striking out. He's going to look to uh, not do that this time. Yeah. <laughs> so here comes the first pitch from Gaynor. He's going to drive that one to right field, but right into the glove of Whisker at first wow. base. So Nick Buckner getting a lot of contact on that one. Just unfortunate placement as Ethan Whisker will take care of Nick Buckner. So with one out, Dan Cannon's going to come up to bat now. Dan Cannon's 0 for 1. He flew out to the first baseman, Ethan Whisker. <laughs> Seeing a trend here. <laughs> Jared Gaynor has just been dominant so far this afternoon. He and Jake Welch both. It's definitely turned into a pitcher's duel here as we've played half the game already as the first pitch to Ken is going to be a strike 0-1. The 0-1 pitch to Kennan is going to be a ball down low, 1-1. One one. The 1-1 one one pitch is going to be grounded towards the third baseman Palmer who has it. Tossed on a whisker at first. That's going to be two quick outs for Jared Gaynor here in the Bottom of the fifth inning. So just like that, two down, and Hunter Wood will come to the plate. He's 0 for 1. He struck out his first time up. And that was back in the second. Jared Gaynor has only given up one hit so far in today's ball game and walked only one guy as well. He has got the last that's counted out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven batters out in a row. So that one's going to be driven into left field, and that's going to end right there with Hunter Woods' base hit in the left. Way to jinx it, Brian. Apparently so. Luckily, he only gave, already gave up a hit, so I wasn't jinxing a no-hitter or anything. Know. So with one man on now and two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning, D.J. Martinez is going to step in. D.J. Martinez had the first hit of the game for the Beavers back in the Third inning. And you chose him as your player of the game this afternoon. Uh, meanwhile, I was going to look at a strike one there. So that one hit the inner third of the plate, 0-1. Oh, one pitch is going to be a ball inside, 1-1. One one. DJ Martinez spinning out of the way at that one. So one ball, one strike, two outs. Man at first base in the top of the fifth inning. It's going to be grounded towards the third baseman, but foul. So retreating back to first base will be Hunter Wood. It's going to be a one ball, two strike count now on DJ Martinez. He looks to get a second hit of the ball game and keep this inning alive as the Beavers struggling here to get men on. The one who strike first is still a 0-0 tie. Comes the pitch out of the hands of Gaynor. That's going to be a ball low and inside. Two and two. Looked like a curveball out of the hands of Jared Gaynor. Gaynor keeping an eye at first base as he delivers the pitch. That one's going to be skied in the air in the right field. Charging is going to be three people. That might land in the... Ooh, just barely yeah, into yeah. foul territory. Luckily enough for the Mammoths, because that was going to be a bloop single. That landed right in that perfect spot where the two infielders, Whisker and Smith, and the right fielder Wood couldn't get to it. So it'll be two and two still on Martinez as he will retrieve his bat. So two balls, two strikes on DJ Martinez. Two outs here in the top of the room. Sorry, the bottom of the fifth inning. Runner at first base, and here comes the pitch. Going to be a ball inside. Martinez nearly got hit with that one. Three and two. He looks like he, looks like he likes to crowd the plate there. You also have Nick Wilson as well that likes to do as that as well. The 3-2 pitch. Swung on Ooh. and missed. 
It looked like a curveball inside he thought was going to be over the heart of the plate. Martinez like, why did I swing at that one? So that'll be it here for the bottom of the fifth inning. We've played five full innings of baseball here at Jimmy John's Field, and it's still a 0-0 tie. Duel for the Mammoths in the top half of the sixth will be the 2-3-4 hitters, Kent Blackstone, Alex Abbott, and Ethan Whisker. We'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the top of the sixth, where due up for the West Side Wood Mammoths is Ken Blackstone. He's 0 for 2 this afternoon, striking out twice. Got fooled on three straight pitches, two changeups, and then a slider to finish him off, as that's going to be a strike on the outside edge, 0 and 1. As the 0 1 pitch is in, swung on and missed there, a slider. That's what fooled him to strike him out last time as well. 0-2 now on Blackstone. The slider from Jake Welch has been very good today. Yes, it has. So is a changeup as well. Meanwhile, fastball is going to miss outside. Fastball he seems to be struggling with. Lots of them missing outside, or I'm sorry, would be missing arm side. Be outside to lefties, but inside to righties. Here comes the pitch to Blackstone. It's going to ground that one over to Rulis. Rulis didn't have to move for that one. So he makes the toss down to Wilson. That's going to be one out here. So now Alex Abbott will step in for his third plate appearance of the ball game. He's one for one so far in it. He had a base hit back in the first, but walked most recently in the third inning. It's the first pitch to Abbott's going to be a ball one and zero. Oh. It's going to drive that one towards Nick Wilson at first base, covering first going to be Welch, and he'll make the tag. And it'll be two up, two down quickly here in the top of the sixth inning as Jake Welch has really found his groove in the last three innings. Yes, he has, Brian. See if he can just keep it going. He hasn't given up a hit all the way since all the way back in the first inning. He's walked a couple guys, however. He's walked guys in the second, third, and fourth innings, but no harm done with that. He's got three walks, and he's struck out here. Five guys so far. Six guys, correction. As 0-1 now on Ethan Whisker. Whisker had his third plate appearance. One of the strikeout victims for Jake Welsh so far today. But he also had a hit back in the first. Comes the 0-1 pitch. It's going to be a ball outside. 2-1, and one, I'm sorry, 1-1 one and one now. Swing and a miss Ooh. at a 
77 mile an hour off speed pitch. Couldn't catch up with that one. One and two. Yeah, it definitely made Ethan Whisker look silly there. Comes the one, two. It's going to be skied high in the air. Backing up is Martinez onto the outfield grass. He's underneath it. We'll make the catch, and that's going to be a quick one, two, three inning. The second one, two, three inning in a row for Jake Welch. And we'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning where due up for the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers will be Thomas Rulis, and Andre Clark, and Brennan Rawl. Those are your nine, one, and two hitters in the Beavers lineup. So we'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone, to the bottom of the sixth inning where due up for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers will be Thomas Rulis. It's been a pitcher's duel this afternoon, Brian. That's for sure. Gainer cruising through five innings so far. He's at 56 pitches, throwing just about 11 pitches per inning, which is usually, ideally, you want your pitcher to go 15 pitches an inning, and he's doing even less than that. Rulis shows bunt but pulls it back as that's going to be a pitch outside, 1-0. and oh. He grounded into a double play his last time up. As the 1-0 pitch, swung on and missed an 85-mile-an-hour fastball right over the heart of the plate. Foul tipped that one, actually, 1-1. One one. Foul tipped it into the glove of Kraus. The 1-1 one -one pitch is going to be a curveball down low inside, 2-1 and one to Rulis. Next pitch is going to be down low again, 2-1 and one now. Looked like it was a changeup. Three and one. My apologies. He's going to ground that one towards the first baseman, Whisker. Whisker going to make the charge back to the first base to get him out himself. Great grab there by Whisker. And, yeah, could have gone either way there. He uh, just reached down to the ground, ranging to his right to make that grab. So now Denandre Clark will step in with one, one down and no man on here in the bottom of the sixth. Still a 0 0 tie. Dan, both teams only have two hits. Yes, they do. And it's like you said, we've been saying all afternoon, it's been a pitcher's duel. And Andre Clark now who's up, struck out his last time up. It's been a quick ball game so far. So far, but we all know that there's always that one inning yep. where a lot happens. Meanwhile, that's going to be hit towards the middle. Smith has it. Wow. On the first, and they're going to get him by half a step. <laughs> so great job by Jeff Smith, yes. ranging to his right to make the stop there as that one almost got up at the middle. And he made the quick throw down to Ethan Whisker at first base to get him. And it wasn't easy because, you know, Denandre Clark was hustling down the first really fast. Denandre Clark, one of the fastest players on the team for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. He's really coming... When he's charging down the base pass, you really got to get that throw out of your hands in a, in a hurry. And Jeff Smith did just that. Brennan Raw is going to swing and miss 
at the first pitch he sees. It looked like a 70 mile an hour change up there, 0 and 1. Oh, one pitch, skied into foul territory. Oh, and two now. So that one's going to get out of play. So two pitch. It's going to miss low, one and two. Delivery from Gaynor is going to miss low and inside. Count's going to fall even out two and two. Both Jake Welch and Gaynor really just cru been cruising here the last few innings. They've been getting help from their defense too where they need it. Yes, they have. Seen some spectacular defensive plays from the Beavers' defense in particular with Clark and Rulis. That one's going to be skied towards the – that's just going to be a blooper on the infield. You're going to let it fall and make the throw down to first base and – that's going to be it here Another in the sixth inning. First. That was a blooper over to Jeff Smith on the infield grass. He let it drop, made the play, and threw down to first base. So we're going to go to the top of the seventh inning. We're due up for the Mammoths. It's going to be Riley Palmer, Nick Krause, and Sean Wood. Still a 0-0 ball game with just two hits apiece. We'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Hey, it's Matt Derry out here in right field in front of the merchandising tent in the trailer. We are having a blast. Get your US PBL gear right here. We've got 24 different kind of hats. We've got jerseys, pennants, foam figures. This West Side Woolly Mammoth jersey is straight fire. You've got to get these jerseys, these hats, everything out here in right field. And of course, the merchandising area behind home plate in the grandstand. Check it out. Welcome back, everyone, to the top of the seventh inning in a game that is still tied 0-0. <laughs> it's been a pitcher's duel all afternoon that so far. That is definitely what it's been. Six innings pitched for both starting pitchers. And Jared Gaynor going into the sixth inning had only 56 pitches, and he's been just cruising. They both have in reality. Jake Welch has six strikeouts so far today. He's gone one, two, three the last two innings as Riley Palmer's going to stand in for his third at-bat of the ballgame. So far... Riley Palmer is 0 for 2, but was robbed of a hit, possibly from Denandre Clark last time up with the diving catch. So the first pitch to Palmer is in. He's going to show bunt, pull it back in time as if that pitch is going to miss outside 1 and 0. No pitch, going to miss just outside again. 2-0 and now. <laughs> As a less than stellar throw back from Wood from behind the plate. Bounces past the mound. Welch have a smile on his face walking back to the mound. That happens to the best of us. Yeah. Palmer coming to the, the ball game this afternoon. He's hitting 233. He's 21 hits, 3 home runs, and 12 RBIs. It's going to be a bull outside. 3-0 and now. Welch may have been cruising through the first six innings, but still struggling with that fastball, constantly missing arm side with it. His changeup is looking really good, as well as the slider. 3-0 pitch. It's going to be 
fouled down the third baseline, three and one. That fastball hit the strike zone. It seems to me when he aims for the outside edge, he's not getting those calls. There are sometimes when he misses badly, but sometimes the calls are pretty close. So it's also a combination of the umpire just not giving very generous calls. Here comes the 3-1 pitch to Palmer. That fastball high in the zone is going to be swung on a miss by Palmer. 3-2, and two, so a full count now. We got some action in the Beavers bullpen. It's the left-hander Kevin Marnin warming up. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. It's going to be driven to center field. Rawls going to have to back up, and he will make the catch in center. Probably about 10 feet shy of the warning track. So after battling out of that 3-0 hole he pitched into, Jake Welch will get Riley Palmer flying out the center, and Nick Cross will step in for his third at-bat of the ballgame. He walked his last time up. Yep, he's 0 for 1 today. As Cross will, I'm sorry, as Wood will return back behind the plate. Just again on the same page. But it feels like they've been on the same page all afternoon. Here comes the first pitch to Kraus. It's going to be a strike 0 and 1. Looked like a slider there from Jake Welch as that one started out inside, then made its way to the outer third of the plate. Appeal down to first base. They're going to say that Kraus did not go, so the count will fall even 1 and 1 now. Yeah, that slider from Jake Welch has looked great all afternoon so far he's been doing damage with it getting a couple guys strike out he fooled Kent Blackstone pretty hard in his second at bat get him to swing and miss of that one is that's going to be a ball two and one but also the changeup is working as well I'm sorry that was called for a strike one and two I apologize It's going to be 2-2 two and two now to Nick Cross as that one missed outside. So Jake Welch is on the mound. He sets. Here comes the pitch. It's going to strike Ooh. him out on the outside edge of that fastball. Beautiful pitch there from Welch. That's going to be the second time today that Jake Welch is going to strike somebody out looking. Make and that strikeout number 7 for Welch this afternoon. That is exactly right, Dan. He's been doing just great so far today. As Sean Wood will now step in. Wood is 0 for 1 so far in today's ball game. He lined out to the second baseman, Thomas Rudis, his last time up, but they were able to double up as well. He's going to hit that one in the right field. Clark ranging to his right is going to make the catch. Good contact on that one for yeah. Sean Wood, but unfortunate result, though, as that one is right into the glove of Andre Clark and right. So it's going to be a third 1-2-3 inning for Jake Welch. And we're going to go to the bottom of the seventh inning where due up is going to be Nick Wilson, Mike Metashevsky, and Nick Buckner. Some seventh inning stretch time here at Jimmy John's Field. We'll be back shortly.
Welcome back, everyone, to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Brian Fisher and Dan Dobler with you here. It's still a 0-0 tie between the Mammoths and the Beavers. We have some great pitching this afternoon from Jared Gaynor and Jake Welch. Yes, it has been a pitcher's duel, but Nick, Wel Nick Wilson is up the bat now. Sounds going to be fouled into the netting behind home plate. He's going to be leading off the inning for the Beavers, and if he c anyone can get anything done for it'll the be Beavers, him. it'll be him. So yep. let's see if he can change the pace here. He's 0 for 2 this afternoon, ground out to the second baseman. Jeff Smith, his first time up, and then struck out his second time. It's going to be a ball one and one as the curveball misses outside. Here comes the 1 1 pitch. It's going to foul the change up down towards the dugout for the Beavers. One and two now. Just had a great weekend of baseball here at Jimmy John's Field, Brian. Yeah, we did, Dan. We had a couple blowouts, a couple close pitchers duels as Nick Wilson's going to swing and miss at an 80-mile-an-hour pitch, off-speed pitch outside the zone. And then two walk-offs yesterday. So Mike Matuszewski will stand in with one up, or one down, and nobody on in the bottom of the seventh inning. Still a nothing-nothing tie. And that's Gainer's eighth strikeout in the ball game. They're definitely both striking out batters left and right, aren't they? Yes, they are. Mike Maniszewski's 0 for 2. He struck out his last time up as well. He's going to hit that one to center field. Farrell, Farrell, ranging to his left, will make the catch in right center. And that's going to be 2 up, 2 down here quickly in the bottom of the seventh inning. So now Nick Buckner will come in. Yet again, another player who is 0 for 2 today. He lined out to the first baseman, Ethan Whisker, his last time up. The first pitch to Buckner. It's going to be a curveball down the center of the plate, 0 and 1. Looked, started out over the inside, then came and broke low. 0-1 pitch is going to be high for a ball, 1-1. One one. Gainer sets on the mound. Here comes the delivery. Fastball from him is going to be fouled off to the left side. Out of play, 1-2. Comes the 1-2 pitch. Another one he's going to foul down the left side. This one towards the left field patio. So Buckner's going to protect the plate and stay alive on that 87-mile-an-hour fastball. One-two pitch. Ooh. He's going to dust off Nick Buckner as he Man. chases a curveball outside the zone. And Beautiful pitch there from Gaynor. Both Welch and Gaynor have these curveballs just working for him here today. And it's been, like you said, Tan, an absolute pitcher's duel. As we go to the top of the eighth inning, do it for the Mammoths. It's going to be Hagen Wilkie, Joe Farrell, and Jeff Smith, the 8, 9, and 1 hitters for the Mammoths. As one of these teams is going to look to get something going. We'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Got a mask right here for you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the video board. Someone has a very important question to ask. <laughs> oh. I get
Welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dobler with you here. And, Dan, we got a pitcher change on the mound. Yeah, surprisingly for the Beavers, it's now the right-hander Trevor Janich. In just three and a half innings pitch, he has a win, zero losses, given up three hits, has given up a walk, has two strikeouts, given up zero runs, and an ERA of 0, 0.00 and a whip of 109. So, yeah, Dan, Trevor, I'm sorry, Trevor, uh, Jared Gaynor's day is done. He did a fantastic job starting today. Jake Welch. Yes, Dan. Jake <laughs> Welch, thank you. I wrote down Johnich on the wrong score I mean, sheet. both pitchers did, are doing amazing. So, yes, so Jake to... Welch's day is done as the first pitch to Hagen Wilkie is going to be a ball outside, 1-0. Jake Welch goes seven innings pitch, gives up two hits, no runs. Meanwhile, that one's going to be skied into right field. On the run is going to be Clark. He will run out of space as that's going to land in the bullpen for the west side. Willie Mammoth's one and one now on Wilkie. He did walk one, two, three batters and struck out one, two, three, four, six, seven batters. So a fantastic start for Jake Welch. Just he was absolutely dominant. He's done everything he can for his his uh, baseball team to get them to win. Trevor Jonich is in now, and like you said, Dan, in 3.2 innings pitched, he has got no earned runs as Higgin Wilkie is going to swing and miss at a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, 1-2 and two now. New pitcher in the mound. We'll see if the Willie Mammoths can get something going. His last time out, Trevor Jonich went one inning pitched, giving up no hits and only walking one guy as he's going to strike out Hagen Wilkie to start the inning. So maybe now with relief pitching in, the offense will come alive as Joe Farrell will step in with one down and nobody on here in the top of the eighth inning. Joe Farrell struck out his last time up. He's going to hit that one back up the middle. Ranging to his left as Martinez makes a quick throw down to first base, and that's going to be two quick outs now for the Beavers and Trevor Jonich on the mound. So a two down, and nobody on here in the top of the eighth. I feel like I've been saying that all day long. <laughs> It'll yep. be Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith's 0 for 3 today. Yes, he grounded to the, out to the third baseman, Dan Ken, his first his last time up. So here comes the pitch from Jonich. That's going to be a 91-mile-an-hour fastball in the outer third of the plate, 0-1. Great location on that pitch. Hitting the outside edge. Comes the 0-1 pitch. Be a fastball outside, 1-1 one one there. Delivery from Jonich is going to be a Change up one and two now, right over the heart of the plate. Don't want to leave that one high. You get burned on the change up over the heart of the plate way too easily. One ball, two strikes. Here comes the pitch. It's going to be a, another pitch outside, two and two now. Comes the 2-2 pitch. That's going to be in the dirt. And they're going to say he did not swing on that one. Jeff Smith started walking back to the yeah. dugout thinking he was going to get called by the umpire down at first as a strike, but it's going to be a full count instead. And the catcher, Hunter Wood, put, applied a tag on him as well, thinking he struck out. The only person who didn't think he struck out was the umpire down at first. As that one's going to be fouled off, it'll remain 3-2 and two now. See, 3-2 pitch is going to be swung on and missed. 
Jeff Smith's going to cha chase a change up down low, and he's going to strike out. So that's a 1-2-3 inning for Trevor Jonich coming in relief of Jake Welch. Picks up right where he left off. <laughs> so we're going to go yep. to the bottom of the eighth inning, still tied 0-0. Zero zero, where due up for the Birmingham Bluefield Beavers will be Dan Kennan, Hunter Wood, and D.J. Martinez, the 6-7-8 hitters in the lineup for the Beavers. So we'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone, to the top half of the – or bottom half of the eighth inning where Joe for the Beavers is going to be Dan Cannon, Hunter Wood, and D.J. Martinez. Dan Cannon leading it off here. Jared Gaynor still on the mound for the Woolly Mammoths. He's kept his pitch count low. That one's going to be hit right up the middle, and it's going to be a base hit for Dan Cannon. So, finally, it's going to end the consecutive out streak for Jared Gaynor at seven outs. So, now the Beavers at the bottom of the eighth inning have something going. Jared Gaynor is still on the mound, like you said, Dan, so far in seven innings pitch. He's only given up two hits, walked one, and struck out nine. He's been phenomenal. And he's deserved this opportunity from Shane McCaddy to stay out there yes. and get the, eighth in, get the eighth inning in. Trying bunt there is Hunter Wood, but he's going to just barely get a piece of it. 0-1 now on him. Dan Kennan singles on, up the middle on the first pitch he sees on the center field. So it'll be a man on first with no outs here. It's the first time the Beavers have had a base runner since the fifth inning. The Woolly Mammoths do have action in their bullpen, though, Brian, and it's the right-hander Gavin Collins. So here comes the 0-1 pitch. Showing bunt there. Hunter Wood's going to bunt it back to the mound. Gonna, not going to get the guy at second base, and it's oh. going to be a bad throw first. That's going to allow Dan Kennan to advance to third base. He's going to wow. stay there, so a poor throw from Jared Gaynor to first base. Is going to let the runner at first base be safe and allow Dan Kennedy to advance all the way to third. So now DJ Martinez, who has one of the few hits in today's ballgame, will step in. He's one for two today with a base hit back in the third, stri striking out swinging in the fifth. He's got a runner just 90 feet away. Shane McCaddy makes his way out to the mound. This might be it for Jared Gaynor. Runners at the corners for the Beavers as they look to take the lead here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Jared Gaynor's going to stay on the mound, however. It looks like they're just having a talk. Yes. Maybe extending the bullpen session for that arm down there. Which is Gavin Collins once again. Also talk a little strategy as well because the Beavers are threatening to score here. We still a scoreless game. A base hit and an error just now has put the first two runners on and 
putting Dan Kennan at third base with no outs is pretty dangerous. Jared Gaynor has earned this shot at getting out and getting out of this jam he's gotten himself into, though, with how well he's performed so far today. Comes the first pitch to Martinez. That's going to be a pitch, a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. So once again, runners at the corners. This is a 0-0 zero -zero tie here in the bottom of the eighth. Here comes the 0-1. It's going to be skied into the grandstands behind home plate. 0-2 now on Martinez. Gainer sets on the mound. Here comes the delivery of the pitch. 0-2 pitch swung on a miss. He Ooh. chased the curveball way out of the zone. Yes. That one was started out over the heart of the plate and then broke low outside the That's definitely bottom of the zone. Gainer's favorite pitch this afternoon. So he strikes out DJ Martinez for the second time, and then it'll be one on with runners at the corners for Thomas Rulis. A double play can get Jared Gainer out of the jam here. Rulis is 0 for 2 today. He hit into a double play back in the third, Dan. Yeah, and didn't he also ground out to the first baseman, Ethan Whisker, his last time up? Comes the first pitch to Rulis. He's going to ground that one towards the third baseline, but that's going to be foul. 0 and 1, good thing, too. Last thing you want to do is double up in the first real scoring chance that the Beavers have had all game. That strikeout to DJ Martinez was number 10 in this ballgame for Jared Gaynor. He's been dominant so far today. This is the first time he's had a runner in scoring position since all the way back in the first inning, Dan. That just yes. shows you how dominant he's been. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Or he actually got a piece of that one as he foul tips it into the glove of Kraus. 0-2 now. So again, no balls, two strikes. Runners at the corners with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. A 0-0 zero to zero tie. The Beavers could take the lead and force the Mammoth's hands in the ninth. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. It's going to hit that one towards the shortstop. This might be a double play. Toss on a second, toss on a first. And it will. They turn the double play. Wow. And Jared Gaynor gets himself <laughs> out of a jam, leaving runners stranded at first and third base. There were no outs when he got into that jam. I'm he strikes telling you, out, Brian, turns the double play. Gainer owes a lot to his defense there. And we go to the top of the ninth, still tied 0 0 as he, as Thomas Rules grounds out to the shortstop, Blackstone. We'll go to the top of the ninth inning. We're due up for the Mammoths. They're going to be Kent Blackstone, Alex Ebbett, and Ethan Whisker. We'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned. Hey, it's Matt Derry out here in right field in front of the merchandising tent and the trailer. We are having a blast. Get your USPBL gear right here. We've got 24 different kind of hats. We've got jerseys, pennants, foam figures. This West Side Woolly Mammoth jersey is straight fire. You've got to get these jerseys, these hats, everything out here in right field. And, of course, the merchandising area behind home plate in the grandstand. Check it out.
Welcome back, everyone. Top of the ninth inning, now still tied 0-0. The Beavers had a chance there in the bottom of the eighth to take a lead, but striking out and then turning it a double play was the Mammoths. Jared Gaynor getting himself out of a jam. Got a new pitcher on the mound for the Beavers, Dan. Yes, we do. It's the left-hander Kevin Martin. In 12 and a half innings pitch, he has given up 11 hits, 9 walks, 19 strikeouts he has. He's given up three runs, which were earned, an ERA of 213, and a whip of 158. So Kent Blackstone will stand in now. Trevor Jonich going one inning pitch, giving striking out two, no hits, no walks for him. He was phenomenal, taking over for Jake Welch on the mound. It's going to be a foul ball going to land in the stands, though. It's going to be 1-1 now on Blackstone. Kevin Martin now on the mound, like you said, Dan. Yeah. That, he's another good bullpen arm to turn to with that ERA at 213. Yes, and he also got a couple applause from the fans because he's also from Shelby Township, Michigan, and he went to Stevenson High School. Shelby Township, obviously, where Jimmy John's Field is stationed in the city of Utica. Comes the 1-1 pitch. That will be a strike on the outside corner. 1-2 and two now on Blackstone. But what a great job. The Moy Mammoths and Jared Gaynor, his defense helping him out, get out of the jam. Comes the 1-2. That's going to be sky towards the air and the gap in right center. It's going to be a bloop single for Blackstone as that lands between all three fielders there, Rulis Clark and Raw. So a leadoff single for Kent Blackstone. It's going to be the first hit for the Mammoths. Sends all the way back in, oh my lord, Dan, the first inning. That's wow. the first time they've gotten a hit since then. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's finally has come. So now with relief pitching in the game, maybe the Mammoths can get something going. Alex Abbott at the plate now. He's one for two today. He's going to drive that one down the right side. On the run, it's going to be Denondre Clark, and he will what? not make the leaping oh. grab out in right field. That's going to... Move Kent Blackson up to second, but Denatre Clark almost Man. got that one. I thought he at the did wall. it at first. He knocked it down, and he wasn't able to catch it. He leaped. He had a great leap there. I thought the way that leap was, I thought he grabbed it and caught it. Looked like he had it in his glove, but he dropped it. So it's going to be two consecutive base hits. Alex Abbott, it's actually better off that, well, not better off. It would have been great if Clark had caught that. But if he hadn't have made any contact at all, that would have been off the wall, and that might have been an extra base hit for the West Side Woolly Mammoths, and that might have been able to score Kent Blackstone with all his speed from first base. So instead, because he dropped it, the runner is only able to advance to first base or second base. Two base hits here to lead off the top of the ninth inning is going to warrant a visit from Chris Newell to the mound. And that was just the Mammoths' fourth hit of the ball game. Better late than never, as now they have a runner in scoring position. It's the only the third time today that they've had that. First time since the second inning that they've had a runner in scoring position. Not even that. First time since the first inning they've had a runner in scoring position. So it's been a long time for them. Let's hope they can capitalize here and go to the bottom of the ninth with a lead. So now Ethan Whisker is going to come up to bat. Whisker had a base hit back in the first inning, but he's 0-1 for 3 in total. Runners have first and second with no outs here in the top of the ninth inning. Still tied 0-0. It's going to be a ball 1-0. Sprinting over to third base was D.J. Martinez. Comes the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss there at a fastball. 1-1 one one now to Whisker. going to sky that one towards right field. Not very deep, though. Denandre Clark will make the catch in shallow right field, and that's not going to be enough to advance the runners. So Ethan Whisker flies out to the right field. There'll be one out now. The runners have first and second for Riley Palmer. You know, Jared Gaynor was able to get out of a jam. Let's see if Kevin Martin can as well. 
Jared Gaynor had runners at the corners with no outs and proceeded to strike out and then turn a double play. Riley Palmer this afternoon is 0 for 3, struck out his first time, flew out to the right fielder Denandre Clark his second time, and his last time out flew out to the center fielder Brandon Raw. Comes the first pitch to Palmer in the at-bat. He's going to check his swing there. Going to call it a strike, 0-1. Martin sets on the mound. Here comes the delivery of the pitch. Swing and a miss there. Big rip there from Palmer. An off-speed pitch on the outer third of the plate. 0-2. The Mammoths look to strike first here late in the game, top of the ninth, and no runs for either team. He's got a runner at first and second with one out. O2 pitch can be grounded fouled on the first baseline. It's going to remain 0-2 now. If you only could straighten that one out, that would definitely advance the runners over. Nick Wilson's playing pretty close to first base down there, however, so yeah. it might have gone right to him. It's hard to tell. Never know what can happen. Martin taking a peek back at second base. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. That's going to be low for a ball, one and two. Four hits for the Mammoths, three hits for the Beavers. That's been it in terms of offense today. Both starting pitchers have done extremely well. Martin goes eight innings pitch, and while Jared Gaynor goes seven. Comes the one-two. It's going to be high. Count's going to fall even two and two now. Two two pitch. He's gonna swung on it, missed at a ninety mile an hour fastball. Big strikeout there from Martin. Kevin Martin's gonna dust off Riley Palmer, and now there's two outs with a runner in scoring position for Nick Kraus. Kraus is zero for two in today's ball game. He struck out his last time up. Kraus can play hero here for the West Side Boy Mammoths with two outs and runners at first and second. Giving them the lead in the top of the ninth. It's going to be a ball low. It's going to get away from Wood, but the runners aren't going to be able to advance as it didn't get far. 1-0 now on Kraus. Martin sets. Takes a look back to second base where Blackstone's at. Comes the 1-0. It's going to drive that one high in the air. Straight up and in is Martinez. who will make the catch on the infield grass and Martin's going to get himself out of trouble. Just and like Jared Gaynor did. We're going to go to the bottom of the ninth inning where the uh, Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers are going to try to walk off. Still a 0-0 tie as we go to the bottom of the ninth. Due up for the Beavers is going to be the top of their lineup to Andre Clark, Brenner on Nick Wilson. As they try to win this game here in the last ditch, ditch, ditch effort. So we'll be back shortly with more. Please stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dober with you here in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's still a 0-0 tie. Denontre Clark set to lead it off for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers as, Kander, guess what? Kander's back out there, Brian. He's going out there for his ninth inning of work. He got in some trouble in the eighth inning. Runners at the corners with no outs. Struck out D.J. Martinez, then got Thomas Rules to hit ground into a double play. Clark shows bunt there. It's going to be a ball 1-0 and as he pulls it back, however. It's been a great afternoon of pitching. Been, yeah, that's for sure. Pitching's definitely been the name of the game today as the 1-0 pitch shows bunt again, but he didn't pull it back in time. 1-1 one one now on Denandre Clark. Clark is 0-2 today, Dan. Yes, he is. He ground out to the second baseman, though Jeff Smith is last time up. He's going to ground that one over to the third baseman, Palmer. Quick toss down to first. That's going to be the first out of the bottom of the ninth. So now Brandon Raw will step in with one out here in the bottom of the ninth. Brandon Raw is 0 for 3 today. His last time up, he grounded out to the second baseman, Jeff Smith. He was like a blooper there. Yeah, it landed in front of Jeff Smith on the infield grass. He's going to sky that one into right field. It's going to be caught. Wow. Oh, no, oh. it's not. He drops it. It's going to be a base hit for Brandon Raw. Man. Looks like he caught that one sliding into the grass, but unable to corral it was Woods. So Brandon Raw is going to be safe down there at first base. Oh, what a great play there almost from Sean Wood. The Beavers can win it here as they tied. It's still tied 0-0 here on the bottom of the ninth inning. Jared Gaynor on the mound for the ninth here. So far through eight innings has only given up four hits. He's been fantastic, as was Jake Welch in his seven innings pitched. So Nick Wilson in now. First pitch to him is going to be a ball outside, 1-0. and And you know Nick Wilson in this type of situation has been clutch. Runners on. He's got one guy down there at first base with one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Beavers look to win it here in a walk-off fashion, 1-0. and Be a ball high, 2-0. and Jared Gainer's got to be careful around Nick Wilson. He got him to strike, strike out swinging twice today. A meeting at the mound between Kraus and Jared Gaynor as they try to. Gavin Collins still warming up in the Woolly Mammoth's bullpen, though. Well, Shane McCaddy has given Jared Gaynor the go here in the ninth inning. He deserves it. Here comes the 2 0. He's going to drive that oh. one to center field. Going back is Pharrell onto the warning track Ooh. where it's going to be caught. That was close there, Brian. It had a loud sound coming off of his bat there. Brennan Raw will retreat back to first base. So now two outs here in the bottom of the ninth. Mike Metashevsky will come in. He's 0 for 3 today as well. He flew out to the center fielder. Joba Pharrell, his last time up. Was the first pitch to Metashevsky. It's going to be a ball low, 1 0 now. Now, Brian, I was hearing if this game does go to extras, they're going to have the kids run the bases and then we'll resume play afterwards. That is correct, Dan. That is exactly what's happening. Kids are going to run the bases after the bottom of the ninth, regardless of the score, and it's going to be a strike, 1 and 1. Runner at first base with two outs here in the bottom of the ninth. Game's tied 0 0. Comes the 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss there, 1-2. and two. If by chance it does go to extra innings, Dan, we play by California rules, which means that we put a runner at second base mm -hmm. for every half inning of extras. It already happened already way early in the season. All the way back in May, I do believe. That's the, he, I think that's when Brad was here with was, us. Yeah, because I was running camera in that ball game. It was the only extra inning game we've seen so far. Hoppers ended up winning that one. Here comes the 1-2 pitch. It's going to be hit up the middle. That's going to be through for a base hit. So now it's going to be runner in scoring position with two outs here as Metashevsky reaches here in the bottom of the ninth. And here comes the designated hitter, Nick Buckner, to the plate. 
Buckner he is has a chance. 0 for 3 here. He's struck out twice, as, including his most recent plate appearance in the seventh inning. So far this season, Nick Buckner does have seven RBIs. Shane McCaddy's coming trotting out to the mound here. See what he decides to do with Gavin Collins warming up. I got to imagine this is going to be it because he's Gavin Collins has been warming up for a while. Perhaps not, as I am wrong again, as he doesn't take the baseball from Gaynor. Just discussing Man. how to get this final out here and send it to extras. What a great afternoon of pitching it was, Brian, especially yeah. for Jared Gaynor. Yeah, Jared Gaynor is now in his ninth inning of work. He's gone eight and two-thirds, hasn't given up a run yet, but he's got a runner in scoring position with two outs. Nick Buckner has some power, can hit it deep. Infield playing deep as well. Nick Buckner to the plate, still looking for his first pitch. Here comes a delivery from Gaynor. It's going to be a ball outside, 1 0. The 1 0 pitch going to be outside 2 0 now. 77 a mile an hour. Looked like a slider there. Perhaps it was a curveball. Actually, it was a curveball correction. And that's been Gainer's favorite pitch all afternoon long. So 2 0 now on Nick Buckner. Comes the 2 0. It's going to be an 88 mile an hour fastball outside. It kind of looks like Dan that might be unintentionally, intentionally walking him here. Yeah. They're not going to give him anything really to work with here, but not, it's not going to be an intentional walk. But then again, you have Dan Kennan, who's on deck. He hit for a single his last time up. 3-0. and oh. Comes the pitch. That one's going to be a strike. 85, or no, it's not. It's going to be called outside. And so here we go. Bases are going to be loaded now. And here comes Shane McCaddy again. That's going to be it for sure this time. It looks like it'll be, yeah, like you said, it'll be it for him. But what a great afternoon for Jared Gaynor. So Gavin Collins will come out of the bullpen. At least I assume that's going to be him. So what a game from Jared Gaynor, regardless of the outcome. Eight and two-thirds innings pitch, Dan, giving up just what? It'd be six hits, five hits. Five hits. So in two thirds, five hits. Walking one, two batters all game long and striking out ten. Jeez, Phenomenal what a outing for him. Was. Gave up no runs, but he inherited runner is going to be for Gavin Collins. So he could end up with the unearned run and the loss in the ball game. What a slap to the face that would be if he ends up with the loss despite going eight and two thirds. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would hurt. Gainers right now just hoping that Gavin Collins can get Dan Kennan out here and send it to extras. Dan Kennan, his last time up, like I said just a few minutes ago, hit for a single. So here's a perfect chance for him. Bases are loaded in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's a 0-0 tie. Two outs as well. So if Dan Kennan manages to get on here, it's going to win the ball game. No, and if he gets on in any manner, it'll win the ball game. Now, if Gavin Collins manages to get the out, we're going to send it to extras. So an ERA of 103 for Gavin Collins, Dan. Yeah, he's been so far really good. Yes, he has. I'd even go as far as saying he's been exceptional so far. <laughs> An 8.2 innings pitched. He's got that ERA at 103. Now, it's a small sample size, but being a relief pitcher, not like they see that many innings. And he'll come in here trying to get the final out. Send it to extra innings for the Westside Woolly Mammoths. Meanwhile, Dan Cowan's going to try to win the game here in the bottom of the ninth. Bases loaded with two outs. And here we go. Like you said, last time up, he hit for a base hit. He made it all the way to third base, but that's where that ended. 
comes the first pitch to Kennan. It's going to be a ball high 1-0. and Bases loaded, two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's a 0-0 tie as Dan Kennan tries to walk off the beaver for the Beavers. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. That's going to be a strike on the outside edge. 1-1 one one now. Everyone's at the edge of their seat here. Jimmy John's field. Collins on the mound sets. Comes the 1-1. That's going to get away from Dan Cannon. I'm sorry, uh, Nick Krause, and he's not going to get far enough away for the run to score, however. And it's going to be 2-1 and one now to Dan Cannon. As soon as I saw that ball get away, the first thing I looked was down to third base to where Brandon Rawl was, but he didn't budge. So the ball didn't really get that far away from Krause. Great job by Kevin, Kevin Cowan rushing over to the home plate to make sure if he did go. So two balls, one strike, two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning with bases loaded in a 0-0 ball game. Here comes the 2-1. It's going to be down low for a ball, 3-1 now. Go. What will happen here? One more ball will walk in the winning run. And the fans begin to cheer. He's got to throw him a strike here. Let's see what Dan Cannon does with a 3-1 count. The 3-1. It's going to be in there for a strike fastball. So, Dan, this can't get any more <laughs> dramatic here. It's a 0-0 ball game here in the bottom of the ninth. Bases are loaded with a 3-2 count on Dan Cannon. One more strike will send it to extras. A ball will walk in a run and win the ball game for the Beavers. And obviously a hit will win the game as well. Here comes the 3-2 pitch to Kennan. He's going to ground that one off. He's going to stay alive. 3-2 and two still. I'm starting to bite my fingers here, Brian. <laughs> this is getting really nervous here. Very anxious to see what will happen with a 3-2 and two count here. My uh, heart rate is <laughs> elevated a little bit here. I'm pumping. As I wait to see the outcome here. On the mound, Collins sets. Here comes the 3-2. Oh, he's going to foul Ooh. another one off. What will Gavin Collins go with now? What pitch to get Dan Cannon? I, I'm not sure, Dan. At this point, I'm just, I'm, one, I'm just waiting to see. I'm here for the ride here, man. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Like Bottom of the ninth on, inning, tied 0-0. It's like going on a roller coaster. You're at the very top of the hill, waiting to go down. Here comes the pitch. That's going to be a ball, wow. and the Beavers are going to win it. They walk in a run with bases loaded in two outs, and the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers win it here in the bottom of the ninth inning thanks to a bases loaded walk to Dan Cannon. A walk-off walk. Whoever thought that would happen? So the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers beat the Westside Woolen Mammoths here one to nothing in the bottom of the ninth inning. We've seen three walk-offs in the past two days, Dan. <laughs> it's been crazy here this weekend at Jimmy John's Field. Two excellent performances between the two starting pitchers. It's it's just gonna it was a fun baseball game to watch. A pitcher's duel through and through. Excellent performances from Welch and Jared Gaynor, and a walk-off walk for the Bir Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers as Gavin Collins walks in the winning run with bases loaded. So once again, a one nothing final for the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers over the Westside Woolen Mammoths and. When we come back, we'll go through the post-game recap and we'll tell you what's up next for the Thursday's game. Please stay tuned.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Brian Fisher and Dan Dober with you here for a post-game recap. And, Dan, oh. what a heck of a yes, game we was. saw today. A one nothing victory for the Beavers as they walk off in the bottom of the ninth with a bases-loaded walk. It, I, you know what? you got to hand it to the starting pitchers today. Yes, it, you do. And you know what? Unfortunately for Jared Gaynor, gets a loss. Yeah, it that was... He was not. He did. He deserved better. Yes, he did. So eight and two thirds innings pitched for him with five hits, one earned run, two walks, and ten strikeouts will give him the loss. I mean, he was just phenomenal, like through yes. and through. The uh, the choice to put him out there in the ninth, he deserved it. But then, you, of course, you ran that risk of him get, uh, getting the loss. The Jake Welsh, the starting pitcher for the Beavers, went seven innings pitched, giving up two hits, three walks, and seven strikeouts. He was equally as impressive. Just didn't go as long. But, I mean, seven innings pitch. I mean, you can't ask anything more no, from your starting pitcher. you can't. Both these starting pitchers were absolutely phenomenal in today's ball game. Uh, Trevor Jonich went one inning pitch, gave up no hits, no walks, struck out two, kicking, picking up right where Jake Welch left off. Kevin Martin went one inning pitched with two hits and one strikeout, no earned runs and no walks after taking over Jonich. Kevin Collins took, out, took over to try and get the final out in the bottom of the ninth but ended up walking in this winning run with bases loaded. And that was it for the pitchers today. And as far as offense goes, Dan, we didn't see a run until the bottom of the ninth. Not at all. <laughs> Dan Kennan ends up winning the game with a bases-loaded walk. He So he went one for three today with an RBI. It's hard to say, Dan, but who's going to be your player of the game? <laughs> you know what? I'm. Can I go with a pitcher this time? Yeah, go for I'm it. I'm going to go with Jared Gaynor. <laughs> all right, fair enough. I... I Player of the game, I'm going to give it to Jaron Gaynor as well. Just it's hard. Of the it's just really hard to pick a player here because we didn't see much hitting at and, all. I mean, don't not taking anything away from Jake Welsh. It was just a pitcher's duel all through and through. But Jared mm -hmm. Gaynor going eight and two thirds inning, just phenomenal today. Yes, I would say Jake Welsh deserves as much credit as Jared Gaynor did for this tight ball game. And Dan, that game only lasted two and a half hours. That's quick. That's that's <laughs> about as short as a game yes, is going to be is. for baseball. Yes, it we is. We saw tons of one, two, three innings, and then of course the. Walk off in the bottom of the ninth, scoring yes. the only run of the ball game was Dan Cannon on a base loaded walk. And you know what? That's three walk offs and in the past two days. Yes, we saw the Hoppers walk off in the completion of the rain completed game on a grand slam from Cam Stewart yesterday afternoon. Then in the evening yesterday, the Utica Unicorns walked off on a sack fly from Nico Lolio. And now today, a walk. We've seen walk offs in plenty of different ways a sack fly, a grand slam, and now a base loaded walk. Yes, we have. So, interesting couple of days here. Dan, what's going to happen on Thursday? 7.05 start on Thursday, Thursdays. I know that much. Yes, it is. And you have the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers taking on the Utica Unicorns. And also, not just Thursday, Thursday, you have Wayne State University night, and also the world-famous team Ghost Riders will be here. Isn't that the, aren't those the monkeys that ride the dogs? I think so. I'm going to miss it. You and Steve will be on the call for all weekend long next week. They were a big hit last year, so yes. no wonder they brought them back this year. You're going to have to send me some video of that. <laughs> I definitely will, Dan. So look forward to that, everyone. Uh, again, the score was one nothing final for, uh, for the Beavers over top of the west side. Willie Mammoth as a bases loaded walk-off walk. For the Beavers, we'll take down the Mammoths. And I'm Brian Fisher with Dan Dobler from Jimmy John's Field. We'll catch you guys, well, I'll catch you guys Thursday at 7.05 p.m. Thank you guys for listening.